The prison system, as we have it now, is both unjust and immoral. I think to most of us, we can understand that the way our prison system currently works is not quite right. Maybe you might not go so far yet as to say unjust and immoral as I did, but I'm sure most of us out there at least can look at it and say, man, there's got to be a better way. And clearly, clearly, as we all look at this, there must be a better way. I'm not going to sit here and talk about the better way, because I'm not really sure what that would look like, and it would take far too much time. Really, I just want to talk about the system we have now versus what we could have. Right now, we have a prison system, and at least on the surface, it protects us from dangerous people and incarcerates people as a form of punishment, right? Well, really, shouldn't a prison be about rehabilitation? Isn't that sort of the idea anyway, is that we're trying to get people, straighten them out, get their act together, put them back on the streets after they serve their time so they can be a productive member of society? I think everybody would agree that that's kind of what we want. The ideal outcome of a prison stay should be somebody coming out a little wiser, a little more weary perhaps, but at the same time ready to change their life. But is that what we have at all? Even, even the ghost of that idea? Is that present in our system now? No. No, not at all. Anyone can look at it and see that the system as it exists currently is a form of monetary coercion. Really, it's, it's a money mill. You have a system that, not only is it a money mill, it is a system that is almost always out of money. So keep that in mind as we go further. Their point is to heap fees on you, fines on you, using the threat of a criminal record of jail time to coerce, generally, a guilty plea instead of a trial. Because, you know, you can either plead guilty, serve a few months in jail, pay a lot of money in all this and do probation, or, or you can spend ten years in jail when you're found guilty and have your life ruined. You want to plead guilty, maybe, right? Not go to trial. So, the system starts on a corrupt level, where they are attempting to get money from you and extort you into pretty much giving up your rights of trial to make it easier. But let's say, you know, you go to trial, we could do a whole separate video on the corruption involved in trial and the simple inefficiency, but moving through that for now, we reach, you know, let's say you're found guilty and you're in jail or prison. What, what's actually happening to you when you go there? What, what's going on? You do have the possibility of maybe pursuing some sort of prison education. They have programs for that, sure. You might be able to get work release and stuff and go have a job, sure. But this is where things get a little fucked up. You want to join work release? Well, that's going to cost you. Oh, you want to be a part of this special program for school? It's going to cost you. You want to get food and stuff that's beyond your basic three meals? You want to order things? It's going to cost you. And not the regular cost you. It's going to cost you the captive audience you have nowhere else to go prices. So everything's two to three times more expensive. You work there? Well, they take a third to half of your paycheck as payment for the privilege, more or less, of staying at the jail. It becomes an exploitive system of near slave labor or, mo or simply monetary gain for the state or the private entities because, yes, we have private prisons, if you weren't aware. And it's all become a sort of money-making, conveyor belt-style justice system where introducing the inequality of rich and poor into this mix, you have a system that is also disproportionately harmful to the poor over the rich. Because, you know, a $10,000 fine for this terrible crime, whether you committed it or not, is for a poor person. An inconceivable amount. $10,000 in addition to all of your extra bills. You have to come up with that? Yeah, not likely. So, the government has you by the balls. Now, let's say you're a rich person. Pay $10,000 or go to jail. Okay, here you go. $10,000? Okay, sure. What, do you need more? Will that help this go over better? Like, So, it is, in essence, because the, our system has become a monetary justice system, with jail basically being the threat hanging over your head to push you into paying the money, the rich are much more safe from justice than the poor. We have jails filled with poor people. You don't see, you know, CEOs and executives sitting in max security, generally. You see the poor, the insane. You see some of the worst of people, but also many innocent people. Many innocent people, more than we would like to admit, extorted into the system through... Again, you know, the heavy plea system. 
you know, any option, no matter how bad generally, can be made to look better if you take an even worse outcome and put it next to it. The prison system itself is not about rehabilitation, restructuring. It's not about making anybody better. It's punitive. It's judgmental. It's punishing. You're there, you're made miserable, and screw you for being there. Like, you're kept in conditions that, well, not as barbaric as they used to be, are still pretty bad. General population, the mingling of large numbers of potentially violent individuals in a close tent setting, kept in an open area and minimally watched, that is an obvious recipe for fights, for murders, for all sorts of terrible things, but we're not going to stop it. We're not going to change it. At least that's not anything in the works now, for us at least in America. It's not preventative either. Let's put it a different way. Do you think somebody who actually is predisposed to want to steal is thinking, oh, well, they just increased the jail time on theft. I, I better change my life now. It went from 10 to 12 years. No, nope, I'm done. They're not really judging it that way. Remember something. People don't commit crimes planning to go to jail. They commit crimes planning to get away with it. So jail pretty automatically doesn't work as a deterrent. A system needs to be preventative in some sense. It needs to hang something out there that will work in some ameliorative sense for crime, right? What, what good are we really doing people if all we're doing is punishing the people after the deed is done? I'm not saying we should throw people in jail before crime happens, but a system based so heavily on punishment after the fact really doesn't protect us. Another huge issue with the prison system is not actually in the prison system. It's us outside of it, the culture we have and how it views the prison system and prisoners. How often have you heard people talk about people in prison and how, like, prison rape is just something they deserve? Oh, well, if they didn't want to get fucked, they shouldn't have committed the crime. Or, oh, the guards are beating them? Poor guys. They committed crimes, you know? We treat them like they're the worst kind of person. And, okay, I get it. When people think of prisoners in prison, they think of rapists. They think of murderers, child molesters. They think of the worst of the worst. But people, I don't think, understand how tiered the prison system is and how it's not just these horrible, violent offenders that go there. All sorts of crimes, white collar, blue collar, whatever, can all land you in higher levels of prison. And when these people get out of jail or prison, we, there's a societal expectation that they better get their shit together, get a job and get you know their life back, right? They need to turn themselves around. But we'll be damned if we give them the chance to do it. <laughs> oh, hire that guy? He's an ex-con. No way. Oh, wait, let him live here? Oh, no, he's an ex-con. Like, the recidivism rates there are astounding when you have a society that will not accept these people. What happens when you have a burglar, right? He spent five years in jail, or prison, let's say. You know, didn't hurt anybody really or anything, but he broke into people's houses and stole a bunch of stuff. Comes out, he tries to get an honest job. No one will hire him. He tries to get an apartment. Can't, doesn't have any money. No one will let him live there anyway. Oh, he's an ex-con. So... What's a man to do in that situation? What he knows best. What he knows will work, right? Goes back to stealing. Well, I know I can get money this way. I know I'll afford a place if I just steal things. But what's the alternative, really, at that point? What have we forced him to do? Well, well we didn't hold a gun to his head, sure, but we did our best to take away every other option. Oh, you want an honest living? Well, good luck with that. We're not giving it to you. Oh, you want an honest way to make your way through the world? Well... No help from us. No understanding from us. Fuck you. Good luck. But don't commit any more crimes. <laughs> like, it's... Wait, so you're gonna fuck me? You're gonna do nothing for me? No encouragement to change my ways? And you're actually gonna make this harder on me? And you're going to expect me to give a shit about what you want? No, no. This is give and take. Yes, they're criminals. Yes, they did bad things. This should never be just ignored. But if you don't at least give them the chance to do something different... How are you going to expect them to do anything different? And so, even exiting the prison system is a problem. From start to finish, going in to out, it is, in fact, if we want to think about it, a cycle. Because what happens? You go to prison. You come out of prison feeling alienated and angry. And, oh, as a side note, just for fun, let's tack on another issue of how prisons are basically criminal. School. We have a, almost like a breeding ground of criminal thought, where ideas are exchanged among criminals, and... Doesn't this just seem like a bad idea to anybody? Like, really? really? Guys, like, this just seems like a bad idea. 
Just saying. There's an entire prisoner culture, an entire prisoner society that exchanges information, has a pecking order, and glorifies their lifestyle. That glorifies criminality and, oh, you've been in here for this and this? Oh, wow, you're respected more. And is this the kind of thing we want to allow to grow, to, to ferment in our system? Is this the kind of thing that we want to encourage? I, I would hope not, because in reality, not only is prison not helping society, but at this point it's actively harming us. It's creating a massive drain on resources. It's cr pretty much cranking out more hardened criminals at the end of their stay. And it's taking, in many cases, people that are not dangerous offenders at all and putting them in a situation where they're going to probably learn how to become dangerous. And I think at this point, this isn't just something to think about. This is something that we really need to start talking about and doing things about. So yeah, I don't know what that is, but let's at least start talking about this one, not just thinking.